Russia's lunar mission to land an unmanned spacecraft on the moon has failed recently. The Lunar 25 spacecraft was launched, aiming to be the first ever in the world to land on the south pole of the moon. But unfortunately, there were some miscalculations with the thrusters at the orbital maneuver stage, causing it to spin out of control and tragically crash into the moon's surface. This video will demonstrate the entire history from when the spacecraft was launched to its unhappy results, with additional information in between explaining how this space mission works. Before the Lunar 25 mission was ready to lift off, some preparations were needed. The rocket was transported to the launch pad with a train after it was done building. The next step is to place the rocket in an upright position. Once the rocket is set vertically, it's time for the support towers to close in and hold the rocket in place. When secured, the transport train is no longer needed. Then the two umbilical towers also close in and it supplies fuel and power. Before liftoff, let's take some time to focus on the rocket. This is the Soyuz 2.1B, a three-stage rocket used for this lunar space mission. It's powered by four side boosters for stage one and a central body booster which holds enough fuel for stage one and two. A single side booster has four large thrusters. The smaller thrusters come in two and can rotate to maneuver the rocket. They're called the vernier thrusters. The second stage is when the central body of the rocket carries on with the journey after separating from the side boosters. It's powered up by four main thrusters and four vernier thrusters. This is stage three rocket, which will complete the final delivery. After this third stage, the Soyuz rocket will fulfill its role and the Lunar 25 spacecraft would be left with Fregat for the next phase of the mission. Shortly before liftoff, these orange covers are taken out of the thrusters. Now that we understand the basics, we can watch it in action. At time minus or T minus 35 seconds, the first umbilical tower clears away from the rocket. At T minus 15 seconds, the second umbilical tower follows. Minus 10 seconds, the first stage rocket thrusters fires up. Early ignition allows the boosters to reach full power before launching. Finally at zero, the support towers release during liftoff. Twenty seconds after liftoff, the vernier thrusters adjusts to tilt the rocket. Two minutes later, the Soyuz rocket exits the Earth's atmosphere. The side booster fuels are empty at this point and get separated from the central body, marking the beginning of stage two. At two and a half minutes, the rocket would be high enough where the protective covers are no longer needed. The next stage begins at five minutes after launch when the stage three rocket fires up as the central body is running out of fuel. The final piece of the Soyuz rocket lines up appropriately with Earth's orbit before separating. This happens just before nine minutes after liftoff. A new phase of the mission begins as stage three rocket reaches its limit and Fregat takes over the rest. Fregat is an additional stage used in the Soyuz rocket to deliver spacecraft into different orbits. In some cases, it can also be referred to as fourth stage. Let's look at how it works. Fregat utilizes the Earth's gravitational pull to gather up momentum. This way, it can reach the necessary speed for the next destination more efficiently as it combines thrusters with natural force. As the Fregat rocket approaches the moon, the Lunar 25 takes preparation as it now needs to complete the hardest part of this space mission. But why don't we look at the engineering behind this spacecraft before getting into that? Lunar 25 is powered up by a single main thruster. And for maneuverability, these four small thrusters are installed on the corners. These large solar panels supply power to the electrical components to extend its runtime. 
In addition to that, the Luna 25 uses a radioactive element to handle extreme cold temperatures. The goal of this space vehicle was to land safely at the south pole of the Moon. This is where temperatures are as low as minus 230 degrees Celsius or minus 382 degrees Fahrenheit. By using plutonium as a heat source, Luna 25 could have lasted up to one full year on the coldest side of the Moon. Now, let's go back to how it failed to land in the first place. While the Luna 25 was supposed to scan the Moon for an appropriate place to land and align itself as a preparation, the thrusters malfunctioned. There was an imbalance in the amount of force released by the thrusters which spun the spacecraft out of control. In this situation, it was near impossible to save, making it very unfortunate for both Russia's history record and scientific research. If you liked this video, please be sure to check out my channel. It'd really help me grow as a small creator.